What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here jumping in uh, 9.40 p.m. September 23rd, 2020. It's a Wednesday night and taking a look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. Shows activity returning to the globe after a strange period of, of absence. Uh, not for sure if that was directly related to any data uh, issues coming from the USGS or if it was extremely quiet uh, within this area over the last couple days. I believe it's kind of like a combination of both. I know we had some earthquake activity out here that was showing up on the EMSC European model, uh, which I don't use too often on here on the globe, but not showing up here uh, on the USGS maps anywhere. Uh, and there was, like I said, there was a couple fours within uh, within this region over here that EMS he was showing but not on the USGS map but it looks as though um, it's returning back to normal as far as the data goes there's a large cluster of fours um, just well, south of the Philippines area and also the Indonesia Islands area seeing a, a quite an uptick of, of earthquake activity within the last couple hours uh, so it's something to uh, keep an eye on it's kind of flaring up out there for sure I want to show you guys the uh, the map here real quick from the USGS the latest quake here on the flat scale earth model is an earthquake down here in Mexico just off the coast of Mexico a 4.4 nothing big uh, but still shows general activity out here around the North America and South American continent uh, we haven't seen any major movement yet Still activity popping off here in Southern California and also uh, up here to the north off the Cascadia Megathrust area subduction zone. Again, not a big earthquake, but activity nonetheless here. Looks pretty quiet, right, on this scale. That's why we've got to go over here to the one day all magnitudes and we can see a little bit of an increase in earthquake uh, activity here. Down here around the Ridgecrest region and also here on the Garlock Fault System. That's that sheer type fault. And uh, it's a pretty good one. It can definitely produce some big quakes there. It's been a while. Just a little cluster of small microquakes there in that area along the Garlock Fault. But uh, movement nonetheless there. Also Ridgecrest area. Um, there's some of the activity I talked about last night still kind of reaching to the south there a little bit of migration headed further and closer to the Garlock Fault down here that's uh, within about looks like about five miles or so from this cluster of quakes there shooting up here to the north uh, looks like the swarm has continued near Mammoth Lakes or picked up again this was somewhat absent um, overnight or I guess I should say through the day it looks like it's really starting to ramp up here you can see a couple recent earthquakes there within the last hour and of course all the other prior earthquakes there before it not big quakes all under 2.0 looking at the uh, the graph over here looks like the largest is at 1.6 but a sign of um, activity picking up and ramping up in the region again there's that linear motion or linear fault uh, release there, fault pressure release. You can see it stretching all the way over here close to uh, Mono Valley, Mono Lake region, all the way into parts of Nevada. And not a whole lot of large magnitudes here in this cluster, just a bunch of twos. Maybe they're an upper two, a bunch of ones, and some microquakes popping off there as well. And uh, we're still seeing activity up here to the north around the Reno area and up into the, the Sierra Nevada of California also some up at Pyramid, Pyramid Lake some small quakes going on there we've seen that uh, last night as well but most of the activity is continuing here along the west coast indicating uh, continued pressure out here Oklahoma ramping up there those are not tornado counts nor hail reports but microquakes popping off there I'm sure they're specifically related to the fracture areas um, injection wells and areas uh, deep in the earth well not super deep but miles deep in the earth that uh, have been um, altered from mankind you can 
see this activity taking place. You can see, if you ever fly over Oklahoma, you can see all these little <laughs> fracking operation sites everywhere out there. And here on the, the map that uh, USGS is using as well, you can see that activity as well. Each, each one of these little um, square little things with their line are roads leading out to a pumping operation uh, that uh, has to do with fracking you know, cracking the earth and whatnot. I don't want to go entirely into it, but uh, that's what's going on out there. These two specific quakes, not, uh, well, it looks like they're maybe about, the closest one here looks to be about, oh shoot, uh, roughly a mile or so, maybe under a mile in any given direction. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that that's got to do with the uh, fracking operations of weakness here in the crustal, parts of the earth let's see where was the other activity at oh, yeah, I would shoot over here a little bit I mean it's very obvious you can see them out here all over the place let's see what we've got here I don't want to go too much on this but you guys get the idea that's what's going on out there some weakness in the crust uh, which means pressure increasing out here um, in the North American continent as we zoom up here to the north of right around Washington area let's go ahead and back out of there let's see a little line of small quakes there 2.5 is the largest near it looks like Cathcart Washington uh, 28 kilometers below surface we've seen seen a little bit of deep activity out here and that's kind of like uh, within close to within the uh, slippage area of the Cascadia subduction zone but that kind of sits off here a little bit more but also extends um, downward and underneath this North American part of the plate uh, so it's possibly that's what we're seeing there uh, I don't believe it's I mean volcanic related at all it's actually within that same area and maybe this is that same exact quake that I covered last night shouldn't be but maybe it is it's within that little park area right yeah, see? Alright, so let's back out of there. Take a look at uh, the rest of the globe. The globe. rest of the flat map out here. You can see those earthquakes that uh, were added onto the Earthquake 3D globe. A couple fours here. There are the Philippines. 5.3. The largest in this little swarm of activity here. Also down here near Tonga. <coughs> some deeper earthquake activity just a bunch of force uh, popping off there yeah, it's just really weird folks how uh, th this area was extremely absent of any earthquakes I would say over the last almost two days and I still I'm not for sure exactly what happened if it's some type of error on the USGS's part as the EMSC website was definitely showing uh, some earthquake activity there so Mid-Atlantic Range there had a pretty good size, Mid-Atlantic Ridge I should say, had a pretty good size uh, 5.7 earthquake earlier today. And that was followed up by an aftershock of a 4.8 magnitude quake. Definitely seen some uh, larger quakes here in this area over the past week or so. I can bring this up and I can show you guys these 7 days, 4.5. And above, there's that 6.9 that struck west of the area that we're looking at right now by about 300 miles or so, according to the scale. Pretty good sized distance to us, but uh, uh, not a lot when it comes to uh, the, the plates out here. Uh, let's see here. What were we talking about? Let's get rid of that. There's a lot of uh, earthquakes on the globe that don't need to be there over the last seven days. What was I looking at? Okay, trimmer map real quick. Last night, we only had this little speck of an activity up here in southern Washington, Oregon border up here. Tonight, or at least throughout the day today, we've seen a large increase in the areas or at least in the southern part of Oregon where we had seen this days before so uh, slippage starting to pick up there along the Cascadia subduction zone trimmer activity 
um, ramping up throughout the day today specifically in that area with about 46 epicenters uh, with the M energy release here in a trimmer fashion not in an earthquake jolt fashion but in a slow slippage motion if you will along that Cascadia subduction zone not a super large increase but definitely uh, picking back up once again uh, I do want to cover Yellowstone here real quick and take a look at that some activity occurring not a whole lot these red spikes look like there could be some type of interference on these two stations here um, stuff right here maybe adjustments on the uh, the uh, seismograph stations here by the folks that run it and I don't I don't really see any type of swarming towards the northwest part of the park here I got hiccups excuse me I got I see some uh, microquakes up here popping off but uh, sporadic there's a few quakes looks like maybe a handful or so nothing big and those probably run in about 1.0 or so on the magnitude scale uh, not really showing up on any other areas throughout the park except locally uh, within the vicinity there small quakes uh, space weather a lot of lot of uh, discussion about some wind coming in some solar wind that's uh, very obvious from that coronal hole that we had there a couple a couple days ago it takes a little while right for the uh, the energy to get here to earth it's not a big huge event uh, you can see the coronal hole marked out here it's kind of where solar wind comes out of the sun and heads in our general direction if it is pointing towards us which it is and we can see that uh, on the obvious scales here earlier in the day today see these yellow spikes here on the K index these are not huge events folks all this is gonna do is uh, flare up the auroras a little bit so it kind of makes me jealous I kind of want to head up north and check them out see the wind speed picking up there um, throughout the day today this yellow line right there indicating the speed a little bit of density not a whole lot there but picking up a little bit along with the solar wind no solar flares folks of course we are in a um, still in a solar minimum or at least um, the sun's showing that we got a solar minimum i think here in about five years or so we're gonna oh well, actually i think within the next couple years we're gonna start seeing solar flares rapidly grow back here on the planet or on the sun <laughs> that'd be horrible to have solar flares here on the planet you can see a little bit of just this is called 2773 just a little bit of irregular irregular type activity there but man just very very absent when it comes to any solar flares but like I said I believe as we head towards uh, solar maximum here in about five years we will see solar flares pick up uh, tremendously and that's that's the stuff we need to be worried about coronal holes these little holes here it's just high wind um, cause disturbances in the magnetic field of earth but not completely bring down our electrical system or satellites in space that a major solar flare could um, and, and as you can see current solar flare threat uh, remains green very minimal folks there's just nothing on the sun uh, when it comes to uh, the solar flare there's the far side here's the what do we got here that's See, that's kind of like that one I just showed you up here. Two, what is it, 2273? You can kind of see it here in the uh, little bit different detail. That's this area right here. I wouldn't doubt it, like I said, if we see stuff advancing and getting uh, a little bit more active on the map. But uh, for right now, it's pretty, pretty quiet, folks. No noteworthy events been like that for quite a while the three-day geomagnetic forecast here uh, looks like a l number category four or so like I say very minor very minor type event this here is from 2014 when they had a uh, pretty large impressive coronal mass ejection there CME so yeah 
been a while since I color, uh, covered solar activity out here. I figured I'd mention it because I've seen a couple videos floating around today about it. This is just uh, just a little bitty, little bitty coronal hole picking up in the wind speed. Kind of keeping Earth on its toes and, you know, flexing its, uh, its uh, defensive mechanisms there. Today in earthquake history is working again. I'm not for sure if the USGS was maybe monitoring the video and fixed it. Who knows? But it looks like it is working. There's not a whole lot of information on it. It's just M6.9, 7.0 in Cape uh, Yakutaga, looks like. Yakutaga. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Alaska, 1899. 6.9 and 7.0. I'm assuming these were aftershocks because when you go to uh, the 1899 Oh, shoot. Hold on a second there. Well, there's a little article here. This may be something entirely different, but it does mention here during September 1899, uh, there was a series of severe earthquakes in the region, the largest being an 8.0 earthquake. Uh, so I'm guessing, and that was back on September 10th within that region, 1899. M8.0. You can see that down there. So I'm assuming that uh, they, those were potentially aftershocks there that the uh, USGS is mentioning on their uh, Today in Earthquake History page. Kind of interesting reading some of these uh, uh, stories here about, you know, back then, back in 1899. A lot of folks running for their lives and wondering what the heck is going on. Let's see here if I can find it. Oh, here we go. So after the initial shock in the morning of September 10th back then, that's for the for the big ones, the 8.0, they rigged up a seismograph using dangling knives. <laughs> dangling knives, like I have uh, an earthquake rock hanging from a piece of yarn, pretty good size piece, is hanging off the ceiling about ooh, about three feet or so, and uh, it's actually a crystal that I call an earthquake rock, and uh, I've seen it move a couple times when we had a local uh, 5.0 earthquake here a few years ago, um, so I kind of keep an eye on the you know the motion and whatnot, but you can pretty much make a uh, a local personalized seismograph yourself with anything hanging from the ceiling so it's pretty neat I just kind of like having it there it's been up there for many years <laughs> still up there got spider webs on it actually uh, but yeah dangling knives and uh, anything else you want to use there I counted 52 shocks before the most powerful shock occurred at noon okay all right the most powerful one there so that's got to be the 8.0 Pretty crazy to be back in those times and have a major earthquake hit. Communications uh, very limited and whatnot as you're out there on your journey. All right, folks. Um, I think I covered everything. I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I just can't remember. I know I'm tired. Um, let's see here. Yeah, 4.4 latest quake out there off the coast of Mexico there. Not a big quake, but the latest on the map. It's good to see activity back up here and and uh, being documented here on the globe. That's kind of why I run live seismograph stations, live data. And I can swap these out for any all over the world. I mean, there's if you take a look at this map here, and that's just... That's just minimal here. I, there's so many more uh, private seismograph stations I can add onto this map uh, to pick up the data anywhere on the globe. It's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of stations to monitor, but I try to keep up the main ones that I like to monitor or where we're seeing um, activity at. You know, maybe like a swarm or whatnot. I always try to keep Yellowstone up here, um, Parkfield, California, anywhere where we could see potential earthquake activity. I like to keep that uh, up and live on the stream. So 
All right, folks. Uh, oh, man. Okay, I got to get going, so we will talk to you guys a little bit later. Have a good night. Please stay safe out there, and uh, we'll chat you guys tomorrow.